Hi everybody, Scory here, and today we're going to go through how to set up your event tracker with LiveTime. So we're going to start from the very beginning where you get your event tracker and your equipment. You go, what do I do to set this up? How do I need to upgrade it or configure it? And how do I get it talking to LiveTime? So first of all, when you get your event tracker, you're going to have some of these pieces right in the box. This is the event tracker itself. Uh, you'll notice that it has a uh, port for being able to plug in the power, but most of you that are going to be out in the field are probably going to uh, power it by battery. So these would plug in directly into your uh, quad batteries as well. And you're also going to have one of these, a wireless router. Uh, the wireless router itself also comes with a handy uh, cable for powering it uh, with battery. Or it can just, yeah, also comes with a regular plug that you can just plug it into a, um, a strip. But on the back here, you have a number of Ethernet ports. And we're going to use some of those to set up your computer, to talk to Event Tracker, uh, to get things going. So the first thing to kind of note here is that this thing itself does not have internet. Obviously, it's a Wi-Fi device, so it can create a local network just great, but it doesn't have any kind of cellular network to be able to go anywhere else. It does have this WAN port, so whatever you plug into this, if you plug a wired internet connection into it, then everything that's plugged into this device will have internet. But I'm going to set it up as if you didn't. Um, and show you a couple of tricks you can do on your computer to make that happen. So to get started, I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in, and I'm going to uh, plug my computer and my event tracker into it. So just plug the power cord in here, um, and I'm going to plug this into my power strip. There we go. Get this fired up. Um, it comes with an Ethernet cable here, the event tracker does. So I'm going to plug an Ethernet cable into this. And I'm going to plug this into port 1 uh, in the router. Next, with that instead, I'm going to power up my event tracker by plugging in the power cable. Remember, you could be instead plugging in a battery to get this powered as well. So we'll power this up. You'll hear the fans kick on in here. And then finally, the last piece I'm going to do is I'm going to hook my computer up to the same network as my event tracker so that I can talk to it. So that when event tracker gets lapsed, it'll send it into live time to be able to talk to it. So we'll just plug a hard wire in here, plug the other side into the second port of the router here as well. You'll notice it starts flashing, you'll notice your computer's connection starts flashing as well with the ethernet to let it know it's on the same network. Okay, so we're going to let this stuff boot up here a little bit, and I'm going to move the camera here to show a little bit on what's going on in my actual computers. Okay, so now we're on our computer, and um, the event tracker is and the computer are both hooked up to the router. So at this point, let's make sure that this computer can actually see event tracker. To do that, you're going to want to go onto your computer, hold in the window key and hit R for run, and type CMD on your com uh, computer here and hit OK. And what happens then is it's going to give you a DOS window here and you're going to want to type ping space 192.168.1.169 and hit enter. And if you see that it's coming back and forth here with the reply, that means you're able to talk to Event Tracker, which is good. If you don't see that, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look at your network settings. So you're going to want to go to control panel and you're going to want to go to network and sharing center. And then go to adapter settings and you're going to want to look at your ethernet connection. Right click it and go to properties. Go to internet protocol version 4 and click properties and take a look. You definitely want this to be set up to obtain an IP address automatically. Remember, your computer is hooked up to the uh, Team Black Sheep router that you received, and that is giving away IP addresses so that all these devices stay together. Additionally, under DNS settings, it's not really going to matter because you're probably not getting out to the internet through this. But if you are, you could select obtain DNS server address automatically, or if you're a little bit techier and you want to use Google's DNS uh, servers, you can certainly select this and all eights for the preferred and 8844 for the alternate. Once you're set, go ahead and hit OK at the bottom of this window. 
hit close, wait for a moment, and then try pinging again, and things should work. Okay, now that we know that we've connected, the next step is to actually go into the event tracker itself. So you're gonna wanna open a web browser. You can open up, um, I'm gonna open up Chrome here, but you can open up your favorite browser of choice. And you're gonna wanna go to this address, which is shown right at the top here as 192.168.1.169 colon 8080 slash admin.htm. This should also be printed in a sheet that was included with your event tracker when you purchased it. So when you go ahead and browse there, if you take a look then, the site that you see should give you a login button. I'm gonna go ahead and use the login and password that was given to me included in the event tracker. If you're successful, the next thing you should see is a start button. I'll go ahead and hit, uh, hit that. And then that should actually take you into Event Tracker. Okay, great. So now once you're in Event Tracker, the first thing you actually wanna look at is you wanna go to Help. Go ahead and click on this, and you're gonna notice that when you go to that screen in the lower right corner, there's actually a listing here. I'll try to focus. Okay, there it is. 193.21b is the one I'm running right now. Um, don't mind that. I kind of run some beta versions sometimes for Event Tracker before they get released. But basically, you want to make sure that that version number matches the version that's currently being shown on the TBS Event Tracker Facebook page. So I'm going to quickly browse to that. So I'm going to go to Facebook here, go to Event Tracker, and you're going to notice in the middle here there is a um, a link that is normally pinned that says the latest version from Florin. Um, in this case, it's 193.19b. So if you're not running the version that Event Tracker has running right now, you're going to need to download and upgrade your Event Tracker before you're able to use it with live time. So let's go through that really quick. The first thing to note is that this is a RAR file. A RAR file is just like a zip. It's a compressed archive of files. But for most people who use Windows, you're not going to have the ability by default to open a RAR file. So I, if you download this file, just like any other browser, it'll show you the file and you can download it and take a look at it, but you're not gonna be able to open it. Um, you can see right here that um, I have the RAR file here, but there's not really an easy way to actually open it. Um, the, what you'd actually have to do is download a program to do that. We recommend uh, either WinRAR or 7-Zip. Uh, I've actually downloaded 7-Zip on the computer. Just to give you an idea, this is what the site should look like. Go to 7-Zip.org slash download and download the version for the Windows you're running and install it. Once you do that, you're able to then right-click the file and you know 7-Zip shows up and you can extract it. So I'll just do that here. I hit extract and then a new file shows up and this is what it should look like. A few different files, a RET, an app file. Um, basically, this is the firmware that you'll need to actually plug into Event Tracker to upgrade it. So at this point, what you'd actually do is you take something like this, USB drive and plug it into your computer. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take the files that you got from that RAR file and copy them under your, your USB drive. So I'll just do that here and show it to you real quick. Copy them over. And once that's set, you're safe to then eject your USB drive and put it into Event Tracker. Uh, most people just rip their USB drives right out of their computers, but the actual proper way to do that with Windows is a little USB icon here. You're gonna right click it and eject it. Now it's safe, I'll unplug the USB drive from my computer here, and I'll head on over to Event Tracker to where I will actually plug in the USB device into the system. So at this point, Event Tracker is ready to be upgraded. So I'm gonna go back to the browser and go back to uh, Event Tracker, and I'm going to click on Options. And if you take a look towards the right-hand side here, there is a section that says Firmware Update. You, at this point, you click on it and let it run the update. It'll go green for a minute and everything will freeze. And then once it's done, it won't be green anymore. And that's your cue to unplug the event tracker and plug it back in. And then um, once it reboots, 
you log back into Event Tracker again, and then go to Back to Help, which is in the upper right corner there. And you check on that version number again in the lower right corner and make sure that this time the version number shows you the, the, the latest version. That's your, that's your um, confirmation that the event tracker got the right firmware. Okay, so all of that being said, now you're ready to actually t connect live time to event tracker. So in event tracker, the next thing you're going to want to do is go back to options. And you're going to want to choose the option here that says external timing, no times in GUI, and make sure that's checked. And then you're going to want to go down to the lower right corner and click save. That will tell Event Tracker to remember that every time it gets turned on, it's immediately ready for it to allow programs like LiveTime to be able to connect to it and use it. Okay. So with all that being in place, now I can actually go and run LiveTime. So let me fire that up. I'm going to log in with my LiveTime FPV account and hit log in. And then the next step you take is you go up to the decoder settings in the upper right corner. It should be red because nothing's connected to it yet. And then you're going to go down to where it says... Um, or first, you use the drop down to select TBS Event Tracker. Uh, they're all listed in here. So you definitely want to choose the Event Tracker option. And then go down to where it says Ethernet and choose 192.168.1.169. With that set, type that in, give it a moment, and Event Tracker should start connecting and talking to LiveTime. Okay, now that the event tracker is connected, you'll notice the finish line's greened up. You'll also notice that when I click on communication, you can see packets of information coming back and forth from event tracker into live time. And if you look up to the upper right corner, you see that this decoder is green. That indicates that it is connected and ready to go. So at this point, your event tracker is hooked to live time and you are ready to start using it. Um, so you should be all set. This should be your full connection. You should be ready to go. The only other thing that gets asked from time to time is remember earlier we talked about that you're connected to this wireless router over here, but this wireless router is not connected to the internet. So how does the computer get internet? Well, if you don't plug in a hardwire internet into your router, a lot of people want to use Wi-Fi to give their computer internet access. Um, the computer is able to get both Wi-Fi and Ethernet hooked up at the same time, but sometimes the computer will get confused if it doesn't know which one to make priority. So let me show you a little trick that is a little bit less known on your computer. You're going to want to go back to control panel, and I've already connected this computer to a Wi-Fi network. Click network sharing center, go to adapter settings. Now when you go into your adapter, so I'll go into Wi-Fi first, I right click, I go to properties, and then I go to IP version 4 and click on properties. Just go to the very bottom and hit advanced. Right down here where it says automatic metric, normally it's checked. Uncheck it and say put Wi-Fi as 1 and then hit OK. Then do the same thing with your Ethernet connection. Right click, go to properties, go to IP version 4, properties, Go to the bottom and hit advanced and make this two. What this tells your computer is if you have both Wi-Fi and a hardline Ethernet, it will put the Wi-Fi connection first for internet access, which is great because that's what you want. If it can't find something, then it will go back to the hardline, which is great for event tracker. That allows your computer to have internet access and broadcast video and data that you want, but also give you the ability to connect directly to the event tracker for timing. So give that a shot as well. I hope this was really helpful in getting event tracker going. Uh, good luck, let us know how it goes, and uh, we'll see you next time.